So I quite recently finished reading Clash from the Elite Second Year Volume 10 and all I gotta say is this is probably one of the best volumes in recent times. I mean this volume really had a lot of highlights that it really shows us that this series never really gets boring to read. There is a lot of things that happen in this volume, some good things, some unfortunate things and I'm here to talk about it. Now of course like always if you have not read Second Year Volume 10 of Clash from the Elite or you're not finished yet then you have been warned because this is going to contain a lot of spoilers so of course now that that's out of the way let's just begin the volume starts with a soliloquy that is done by none other than hashimoto who if you don't know is somebody that works for sakinagi he's part of sakinagi's group that is responsible for getting information and telling that information to sakinagi if it's deemed important now in this soliloquy we come to find out that hashimoto has a lot of trust issues he says very clearly that he can't fully trust other people and that is because he's been betrayed in the past so because of that he doesn't really get close with anyone and he reveals very quickly that if there's something he wants to do or if there's something he wants to get he is going to make sure he gets what he wants even if it means using dirty trick afterwards we go to present day in which we see kiyotaka walking towards the school now one thing that he does mention is that he's gotten used to this daily routine and it's something that he's going to greatly miss once this is all over and it's very clear that him leaving the school is something that he still has on his head and he still has hasn't forgotten about the fact that this is his last few moments of freedom according to him so he might as well cherish it however he is now walking alone as we come to find out that there's somebody that is holding his arm and this is none other than his girlfriend k in which for a moment he stares at her too much in which confuses k and asks ayana koji why is he staring at her to which ayana koji says that it's for no reason and if that she really is bothered by him staring at her in which in response k states that she has no issues with him staring at her but just simply wanted to know ayana koji goes into specific details how him and his relationship with k has pretty much gone back to normal like it used to although he is more specific this time saying that he and k have spent more time alone and he doesn't need to go into more specific details about what that really means since i'm pretty sure anybody can put two and two together that when a boy and a girl are alone together in a room you can kind of guess what's actually going on and i'm pretty sure i don't need to explain to you what is happening between ayana koji and k afterwards both ayana koji and k are already in the classroom and k is already going to her group of friends while ayana koji simply goes to his desk like usual but this is where he is approached by none other than sudo in which sudo is clearly envious at the relationship that ayana koji has because he states that it's perfectly fine if ayana Ayana Koji and K are dating, but they don't have to be all lovey-dovey for the people to see. It's very clear that in these moments, Sudo really wishes he had some sort of relationship just like Ayana Koji, and you do feel bad for the guy because he does deserve to be in a relationship, but sadly he hasn't been into one because as you all know, in second year, volume 8, he was rejected by Horikita when he asked her out. However, afterwards, Sudo then changed the topic, asking Ayana Koji if he got some sort of message from the school, to which Ayana Koji states that he had apparently this message was about how the school to action on two first years who were doing let's just say did things that aren't appropriate in the public of course because of this the school quickly responded by punishing these two first years pseudo tells ayana koji if he's into that kind of thing to which ayana koji is quickly able to deny it saying that he will never do that because the school is filled with cameras and there's people everywhere so you might as well just do it somewhere private which seems to have been the right answer because pseudo is satisfied with what ayana koji says afterwards the school day is just about to begin as chabashira comes into the classroom to talk to the class although many people as well as ayana koji are very quick to realize that it seems that she was in a rush because her hair is a little bit messed up but they don't bring this up to chabashira because many of them consider it to be very disrespectful anyways chabashira is very quick to talk about the upcoming third term stating that this third term is going to go by very quickly just before they know it however she also brings up the topic of the parent teacher conference although it's not really parent teacher conference because she states that the school has already contacted the parents so it's basically going to be student and teacher which it seems to have really been a great choice for ayana koji because as you all know his father isn't the greatest and i doubt ayana koji wants to spend even a second with this person after the announcements chabashira leaves the classroom and this is where the class talks about 
their future and what they want to do after high school. One of the biggest highlights was Hirata in which he states that after high school he wants to go into university to study more. This of course shocks the class because due to the skills that he has with soccer, many people see Hirata being able to be a professional soccer player. However, Hirata says that he really just wants to focus on school because even if he does want to be a professional soccer player, he does know that there's still a lot of things he has to do to be the greatest. Not only does he have to be very skillful, but it's something that every player has to do and that is be very athletic and be consistent with their physical abilities. This is where Kese aka Yukimura jumps into the conversation stating that he would love to be in class A in order to get the privileges because if you were to get the class A privileges, you'll be able to go any kind of job you want. And the job that he specifically says that can get you in thanks to the class A privileges will be working for a top company. Of course, Ayana Koji, when he's listening to this, says that there's both pros and cons to what both Harata and Kese just said. And this is where he starts to think to himself if the life he is planning on having is the correct one. The plan that was chosen by him is that really the life that he wants to follow? That is something that he starts to quickly think once he hears this conversation, which just really goes to show us that Ayana Koji is clearly thinking more deeply about his life and what he's planning on actually doing. After this, it is time for lunch and Ayana Koji is already in the cafeteria by himself. He's not with Kay because Kay is already with her group of friends. As he sees Kay with her friends, he starts to wonder why do girls have a habit of walking side to side and he asks this to the person that is behind him and that is Horikita. Horikita is amazed that Ayana Koji was able to tell who it was behind him and ask Ayana Koji if he has eyes in the back of his head. To which Ayana Koji responds saying that he will answer a question if he answers his question of why girls walk side by side. However, someone else joins the conversation and says that this is probably a hard question for Horikita because Horikita doesn't have many friends. This of course annoys Horikita and in response asks Kushida if she really is planning on having an argument in the cafeteria to which Kushida doesn't deny it because well as you all know Kushida is not the biggest Horikita fan. Ayana Koji can quickly witness the intense glaring between Kushida and Horikita but the subject quickly changes as Horikita tells Ayana Koji if he is interested in her buying lunch for him. Of course this brings back memories from the past as Ayana Koji is very quick to remember the last time Horikita offered lunch to him. Of course he is very skeptical but Horikita promises that there's nothing behind it. While still hesitant Ayana Koji accepts her offer but this is where he quickly notices that things seem to be very strange as not only is Kushida going to be joining them for lunch but they're not actually going to be eating in the cafeteria to which of course leads to Ayana Koji questioning where they're going to buy their lunch but this is where Horikita says that he'll find out very soon but they need to make a quick stop at the convenience store because she needs to buy stomach medicine. Ayana Koji is clearly confused and asks why they need to buy stomach medicine and it is because Horikita will reveal that they're all going to be eating a lunch that was made by Ibuki. This is where Ayana Koji instantly regrets accepting this offer and tries to escape but it's no use because Horikita and Kushida are not going to let him go by that easy. And this is where we get some backstory as to how this all even happened in which apparently Horikita challenged Ibuki into making good food because Ibuki was very confident that she could make great food just like Horikita. Basically it was Ibuki being competitive like always and now Horikita wanted to see if she was the real deal. And we also come to find out that Horikita has been inviting Ibuki to eat food with her. But of course, it wasn't just the two of them as Kushida would oftentimes visit Horikita's room to eat with them. Now in Kushida's point of view, she states how the only reason why she did this is because she wanted to see a fight hopefully happen between Horikita and Ibuki. Which of course is not an answer that surprised Ayana Koji because if you do know about Kushida's true personality, this is something that she's bound to say. But this is where Kushida tells Ayana Koji that she should be happy because he's going to be eating food from a person that is considered a girl. But Ayana Koji is very quick to deny that because he states that he was tricked. Once they go into the classroom, this is where they finally see Ibuki and of course Ibuki is surprised at the fact that Ayana Koji is even in here. But Horikita is very quick to say that it's better to have three judges rather than two. Ibuki doesn't really seem to have an issue with this and once they all sit down, this is where Ibuki shows them the box that contains the lunch that she made. Obviously Horikita, Kushida, and Ayana Koji are really skeptical and are hoping that this 
food is at least decent. Horikita gives Kushida and Ayana Koji disposable chopsticks and once they're all ready, they open the box in which they see that the appearance of the food is actually very decent, something which was surprised by everyone because they thought that Ibuki was going to have a hard time making this food look appetizing. But all three of them knew that taste is what really mattered and so they all started to eat the lunch. Horikita was first to eat it and this is where Kushida was waiting to see what she had to say. But Horikita explains how she's going to wait until everyone eats the lunch and then give her opinion. This irritates Kushida and Ayana Koji comments that if this was somebody else, somebody that had no idea about Kushida's true personality, they would most likely faint by her reaction. But nonetheless, both Kushida and Ayana Koji were next to eat the lunch and after all three of them ate it, this is where Horikita finally gave out her opinion in which she tells Ibuki that her food wasn't great, which leads to Ibuki's confidence quickly dropping and this is where Kushida and as well as Ayana Koji proceed to say that they also have the same opinion as Horikita. This leads to Ibuki asking why do they think that and this is where Horikita explains why her food wasn't great. The first reason was the seasoning. Horikita was very quick to point out how her food had a lot of seasoning and this was most likely to have flavor but of course having too much seasoning is not great. And the second thing was because of its inconsistency. There were many different kinds of shapes of food in the lunch that she could quickly notice that there were some things that were smaller but there were some things that were more bigger and this most likely was because Ibuki had trouble figuring out what the right size of the food should be and all Ibuki in this moment can do is just simply stay silent while also looking annoyed by the comments that she is being given. After realizing that she did not win this is where Ibuki decides to vent out her frustration saying that this was all stupid and that she doesn't need to learn to cook because cooking is pointless as you can easily get food from the convenience store and other places that know how to make food but Horikita is very quick to counter this saying that she doesn't need to simply eat food from outside places because that's not good for her health and that could explain why she hasn't grown and this is where Kushida jumps in saying that that might be the reason why she hasn't grown mentally but also physically as well. This of course irritates Ibuki and she questions Kushida what she meant by the physical part and Kushida proceeds just to answer Ibuki telling her that she really needs to explain what she truly meant by that comment. This creates even more tension, but this tension will be broken out by Horikita, telling both Kushida and Ibuki to stop. After a few back and forth, this is where Ayana Cody says in a very clear voice that Horikita and Kushida and Ibuki clearly are friends and are getting along very well. And in response to this, all three of them tell them at the same time that they are not friends. But inside Ayana Cody's mind, he said that that's not the case because if that was really the case, they wouldn't be hanging out as much as they all do. After Ibuki failed on her challenge, Horikita tells Ibuki that it's very clear that she doesn't have a healthy diet and she's not eating enough nutrients, to which she offers her to come to her room in order to eat food with her, which Ibuki is very quick to accept. And of course, Kushida joins in as well. Even though she wasn't invited, she was still insisting on going into Horikita's room. And of course, Horikita knowing Kushida tries not to fight it anymore because she knows that no matter what she says, Kushida is going to join no matter what. Just when things have seemed to be finished, this is where Ayana Koji stops Horikita on her track telling her that she still needs to buy lunch for him. To which Horikita responds saying that she doesn't really need to because there's still the lunch that Ibuki made. However, of course, this is not something Ayana Koji is going to take. And Horikita knows this because eventually she will tell Ayana Koji that she was simply joking and that she is going to buy food for him. However, towards the end, we come to find out that Ayana Koji couldn't just simply choose what he wanted to eat. He had to pick specific items because it's very clear that Horikita wasn't going to spend a lot of money just to buy lunch for him. And that's the end of pretty much that entire ordeal. After this, we get a moment in which Ayana Koji is on his room and it seems like he's about to get ready for the next day. But just before he's about to call it a day, he actually goes to his drawer and grabs a sketchbook along with colored pencils that he bought a while ago. And he's about to draw something, but he has no idea what to draw. He states how he could have just easily drawn something randomly, but if it's not on his mind, he really has no intentions of drawing anything. So after a while, Ayana Koji simply just puts his sketchbook back to the drawer and calls it a day. The very next day, Ayana Koji and his class are very quick to find out about the next special exam that they're going to take and this exam is called survival and elimination exam of course the students are very quick to listen to what Chawashira is going to say and as soon as everyone is ready this is where Chawashira gets 
on with the details now there's a lot of information about this test and it's really long so i'm going to try to keep it very basic and hopefully be able to get the details that you need to know but basically this exam all the classes of second year is not just 1v1s the title of course is called the special exam of survival and dropout the school will provide different problems to each class and the class will select its genre and difficulty and the problem will go to the classes in a predetermined order example so if this is like the order of the classes if the order is a b c d that will mean that class a will be the first to attack they will be attacking class b and class b will have to defend themselves then after that is over class b will be the attackers and then they will have to attack class c and of course after this class c will be the defenders and then after this happens class c will be the attackers and then class d will be the defenders and then lastly class d will be the attackers and class a will be the defenders and this will be pretty much a cycle in which the first part is 10 and then after this the second part will be counterclockwise 10 as well so in total there's going to be 20 cycles in this exam the genre of problems can range from the regular school subjects to things like subculture and entertainment world besides genres and difficulties the attacking class also chooses the student who will have to answer the question the reward for this exam would be as follows if you get first place the class will be awarded 100 class points however if you end up in second and third you actually lose 50 class points and of course if you are in last you lose 100 class points now this of course shocks everyone because it seems that there can only be one winner in this exam and that's pretty much the point that's why it's called survival and elimination because you have to make sure you stay in first place no matter what and of course another interesting detail is how they're actually able to use their phones during this exam now of course they can't just use it whenever they want to because they can't use it when they're taking their exam however if they are just simply spectators they can actually use their phones to either cram in more information or to just simply talk with the other members of the other classes to negotiate some sort of alliance however you only have three chances to answer correctly if you happen to be called three times and you don't answer any question correct you are eliminated and you run the risk of being expelled not only that but there's actually something that's also very interesting as well is that if you are the leader of the class that means you actually don't have any risk of getting expelled but if your class ends up in last place you have to be the one responsible choosing who to be eliminated from the eliminated people meaning that the person who gets expelled will be chosen by the leader of the class which of course while it is nice to not be risk of expulsion if you're the leader you also have to bear a lot of responsibility after the exam was explained this is where the entire class decides to come together and talk about it not only about what is going to be expected from the exam but also who is going to be the leader of the class this is where Horikita tells the class that if they like to talk about all this they should probably talk about it during lunch in the classroom but of course Horikita makes it very clear that not everyone has to join into this conversation but it seems that the majority do want to join into this conversation because as soon as lunch happens everyone is very quick to grab their foods and instantly go into the classroom to have this discussion of course everyone except Koenji but are you really surprised that Koenji isn't there of course as the discussion is about to take place the biggest topic and it seems the thing that people want to talk about the most is who is going to be the leader of the class now it's obvious that some people already know who should be the leader and of course Hirata is very quick to say it because he believes that the person who should be the leader is Horikita now it's not surprising for Horikita as she was very quick to come out and say that if everyone agrees she would happily be the leader for this exam. But just when it seems that everyone has come to an agreement someone actually intervenes and says that they should probably talk about this more deeper and this is none other than Mazono who states that isn't there another person that is capable of being a leader. Of course the entire class is confused as to why she was the one that decided to want to talk about this more since it's obvious that everyone knows that Horikita is capable of being a good leader but my zone explains that due to the things that happened during the unanimous voting exam in which of course for those who actually forgot remember that Horikita made a promise that whoever was the one that was intentionally destroying the class was going to be expelled that person was Kushida and as you all know Kushida was put into a corner during this exam that made her show her true personalities in front of the entire class however despite her being the traitor and despite her intentionally ruining the exam for everyone Horikita still kept her and the 
decided to eliminate Sakura. Ayana Koji glances very quickly to Hasabe in which he could see that Hasabe still hasn't forgotten about that day. It's very clear that, that moment is still something that Hasabe has never forgotten and it's something that she's probably never going to forget anytime soon. Maizono explains how because of that it seems that Horikita is somebody that is very quick to change the rules and not fulfill the promise that she promised everyone that she was going to do. This is where Horikita jumps in and tells Maizono that she is 100% in the right to not trust her fully yet. She knows very well that she wasn't well prepared during that exam and she knows very well that she did a lot of things that many people would obviously see as very untrustworthy. But now that she has noticed her mistakes and is trying to improve, she hopes that she could be someone that is actually a great leader. And she states very clear as well is that even though there might be someone in the classroom that is capable of being a leader, that person hasn't volunteered to be leader. And to make it even more clear, she tells the class once again if there is somebody that wants to be a leader. To which of course no one raises their hand and in fact there's actually a few people not just horikita that actually stare at ayana koji but of course ayana koji ignores this as he knows that he has no intentions of being a leader not surprised with this horikita continues on saying that that's pretty much the decision that they have now it's very clear that the class agrees that horikita is going to be the leader and that's final and afterwards maizono simply has no counter argument and proceeds to stay silent after the meeting both ayana koji and K are walking towards Kiyaki Mall. However, Ayana Koji states very clearly that this was not something that they had planned and it seems that K just simply wanted to take a detour to have more time to talk. And this is where K shows her worries and her anxiety as she's worried that she may be a person that could be in risk of elimination. And that while she's not against Horikita being the leader, she wouldn't mind Ayana Koji being the leader because she believed that if he was the leader, he would protect her no matter what. However, Ayana Koji is very quick to calm Kei's unease, stating that Horikita knows very well how deep the relationship is. And in Horikita's point of view, the last person she would need to eliminate would be Kei because if she were to eliminate the person that she needs cooperation the most, if she were to eliminate his girlfriend, this would make Horikita believe that Ayana Koji would just simply give up and not have any intentions of going further into class A. This actually calms K because now she's confident that she is not in risk of expulsion because of her status with Kiyotaka. After coming back from the mall, both Ayana Koji and K notice a student that is simply sleeping in the bench and this is none other than I, who seems to have taken a nap in the bench which of course the both of them are very shocked considering that the weather is very cold, the fact that someone is sleeping in a bench out of all places is very unusual. Ayana Koji wonders if I is dead but K is very quick to say that that is not the case whatsoever and out of nowhere I decides to wake up and says that K is absolutely correct that she is still alive. Ayana Koji tells I what is she doing here in which in response I simply says that she wants to speak with him. K is confused and asks him if he knows who this person is to which Ayana Koji states that this person is somebody that he has talked to in the past but they only have had one discussion. This of course doesn't sit well with K and tells Ayana Kuri that it's very strange how the majority of people that he talks to the most is usually girls, something which Ayana Koji can't really deny. Ayana Koji asks Ai what does she really want to talk about in which Ai actually says that she actually was in fact planning on talking about none other than K which of course surprises K because she wasn't expecting to be the one to actually be the topic of their conversation. Now that she is here, I is now focusing on K alone and asks her why did she date Harata? No, she actually corrects her question saying why would Harata date a girl like her? This of course even makes K all the more confused, not really knowing what the point of this question is. I starts to walk around K analyzing every inch of her, which of course makes K not only confused but also extremely uncomfortable. And this is where I proceeds to touch K's cheek, which of course K is not too happy about because she doesn't like random people touching her. And this is where I's words start to become more brutal, wondering how can a casual girl like K be the one who ended up dating Harata for a while. Of course, K doesn't understand what she meant by casual to which i respond by saying that there's nothing special about kate there's nothing unique that makes her different from the other girls from the school of course this comment doesn't sit well with k and in response k states that it's maybe because she was cute and harata found her very attractive 
Of course, that is far from the case, and we as the readers actually know why Harata and Kay ended up dating in the first place. However, despite Kay making this comment, I had her doubts because remember when she was touching her cheek? Well, it wasn't because of nothing, because I would discover that Kay used to use a lot of makeup, and in I's theory, this makeup was used in order to use it as some sort of mask to hide the person she truly is. Of course, seeing all this, Ayana Koei could tell this conversation was not going in a good direction and proceeds to intervene, telling I that maybe love is not the huge factor here and it's just simply feelings. I mean, that's the reason why him and Kay are together is because of their feelings. To which I consider that also because she states that while she doesn't know anything about love, that could also be a reason as well. After this, I just simply apologizes for making those comments towards Kay. But of course, Kay is just simply over it and it's very clear she just wants this conversation to end. But as soon as I is about to leave, Ayana Koji makes a comment that makes this discussion go even further. Ayana Koji tells Ai that she's a very unique student unlike any of the other people from class A. Ai is not surprised by this statement and explains how she used to actually be quiet all the time and she actually was living a very peaceful life. However, due to some very unexpected circumstances, now she is actually doing a lot of things and is no longer having the peaceful life that she once had. Because the reason why she's doing all this is because she wants to stay in class A. Of course, Ayana Koji is very quick to understand this because I is somebody that he used to be. He too was also somebody that was planning on having a peaceful life, but of course, he got into a lot of situations that now made him stand out even more. And all I have to say is that I hope in the near future we get more moments between I and Ayana Koji because it's very clear they have a very unique dynamic between each other. And just when it seems that the conversation is over, I tells Ayana Koji and Kay that in the future she's actually planning on talking with them even more and how it might be best to exchange contact information. Of course, Kane doesn't want any of it, but Ayana Koji is the complete opposite as he's perfectly fine giving his contact information. Kay asks why, but Ayana Koji simply responds by saying that it's better to have more friends. And this is where Kay openly admits that that's the side of Ayana Koji that she finds cute the most. And of course, just like that, Kay also gives her contact information to Ai. Some time has passed on, and as Ayana Koji is about to leave the classroom for the day, he is stalked by Michan who seems to have some very important information to talk to Ayana Koji and asks if he is available. Of course, Ayana Koji has a lot of free time at the moment, so he proceeds to actually talk to Michan. But it seems that Michan doesn't want to talk to the classroom, and of course, Ayana Koji proceeds to tell her that if it's fine to talk outside. Michan agrees, and this is where we come to find out that Michan is still trying to figure out who the person is that sent her all that food when she was isolating herself in her room. For those who don't know, during second year volume 6, we come to find out that Michan, as well as the other girls like Kushida and Hasabe, were all in their rooms isolating themselves ever since the whole unanimous voting exam. The reason Michan was isolating herself was because Kushida was the one who told the class that she had a crush on Harata. But it seems that during that time period, someone was actually sending her food to her house, which of course confused Michan as she didn't know exactly who this person was. But it seems that right now, Michan actually has some information that could lead to the idea identity of this individual. She says how she actually went to the convenience store to ask about who could possibly be the person that bought all these items for her. But when she asked the employee, the employee came out and said that they had no idea because they weren't the person that was in that ship during that time. Of course, Minchan seems to have been defeated by this information and it seems that she actually lost hope as to find the identity. However, recently when she actually went to the same convenience store once again, one employee actually went up to Michan and told her that she actually was the one that knew who might be the identity of the person that bought all these items for her. But in a panic, Michan ran away, not being able to hear out the answer. Of course, Ayana Koji wasn't surprised due to Michan's shy personality, but it's very clear that Michan wants to know who this person is. And Ayana Koji tells her if that's really the case. Does she really want to know who this person is? Because it's very clear the person had no intentions of revealing their identity. So it's almost as if this person doesn't want anybody to know who they are. But Michan is determined to find this person because she wants to thank them for what they did. Even if it was just simply giving her food, she was pretty much being comforted during her worst moments of her life. Of course, Ayana Koi tells her that there's only one way that that could happen. And that is by her once again going to the convenience store and talking 
happened to the employee that may know the identity. Of course, Michan knows this, but she was wondering if Ayana Koji can tag along with her. Of course, Ayana Koji doesn't have any issues, but it just really goes to show us once again that Michan really can't do things on her own just yet. After they both go into the convenience store, the employee is very quick to notice her, and this is where Michan apologizes to the employee for running away like that, to which the employee doesn't see really any issue with it and accepts her apology, but states that it seems that Michan got the courage to talk to them once again thanks to her boyfriend, which of course she's thinking that Ayana Koji is in some sort of relationship with Michan. Of course, Michan panics and of course becomes very shy because of this statement. However, the employee also makes a comment stating how it's weird that Ayana Koji is here when she has happened to see him with another girl. However, once she says this out loud, she can put two and two together that Ayana Koji is not in a relationship with Michan. After the misunderstanding has been resolved, the employee is very quick to give the information that Michan has always wanted. Who is the identity of the person who bought her all those items for her? And the employee says that it's a student. After hearing the name, both Ayana Koji and Michan are shocked. Out of all the people that could have done this, the last person that they thought it would be would be Koenji. However, the employee was able to confirm this and it's because when you buy items, you have your school ID shown when you make the transaction. So obviously the name will pop out as to who was the person that bought the item. After this big revelation, Michan is still surprised that it was Koenji who was helping her out but she doesn't really know why Koenji would do that because he has shown that he has no interest in other people other than himself so why out of all the people Michan was the one that he decided to help out however this question wouldn't be answered if they directly don't speak with Koenji Ayana Koji tells her what is she planning on doing to which Michan states how she's actually planning on giving him a thank you gift because of what he did. However, once again, Michan can't do it on her own and she asks Ayana Koji if she could come with him. Of course, Ayana Koji could have said no, but he proceeds to actually come along because he actually wants to see what Koenji is going to react when he sees both him and Michan confronting him about the situation. The following day, this being a Saturday, Ayana Koji wakes up early in order to prepare for his day with Michan. He also states very specifically how he actually had to wake up really early because K was actually in his room sleeping and he wanted to get this over with because both him and K are going to have plans but they had to delay it in order to do the things with Michan. So as he's waiting in the lobby for Michan, Michan of course appears but when Ayana Koji asks her the time and location that she gave Koenji to meet up, Michan freezes as she has completely forgotten to ask Koenji to spare some time to talk to him. This shocks Ayana Koji because he really doesn't know what to do now in this situation but seeing Michan's face going red and it looks like she's about to cry, Ayana Koji tells Michan that he may know where Koenji is and it will be revealed that Koenji is in fact in the gym. The reason why Ayana Koji knows this is because quite recently he has gone to the gym many times and he has noticed that on Saturdays Koenji is there in the mornings. So they head to Kiyaki Mall and they head to the gym and no surprise Koenji is there in the gym doing his workout. Ayana Koji sees to see when he's going to leave and it seems that he's about to get ready to leave the gym. After a while, after waiting almost a really long time for him, Koenji finally gets out of the gym and this is where Michan and Ayana Koji approach him. Koenji asks what do they want and this is where Michan tells him that she wants to talk to him. But Koenji cuts her off saying that he actually has plans in mind so he can't do anything today. And this is where he proceeds to leave. Michan has no idea what to do because she still wants to talk to Koenji and give him the gift that she bought him. Ayana Koji tells that it might be a good idea to spy on him and see where he's going. Michan of course is against this but Ayana Koji tells him that that's pretty much the only way as they probably won't have another moment like this in the near future. Michan agrees and both Ayana Koji and Michan spy on Koenji wondering where he's going and as a result we come to find out that Koenji actually has plans to talk to a third year student. Both Michan and Ayana Koji can't really hear out their conversation so Ayana Koji and Michan decide to wait for him outside in one of the near exit doors. However, as time goes on and Koenji hasn't left the mall, they quickly go back inside to see that he disappeared once again. At first, they're worried that Koenji must have used a different exit to leave the mall. However, they find him very quickly and once again, they confront him. 
This time, Quenji actually stops for a really long time and once again asks what do they both want. Michan asks directly if Koenji was the one that sent her food in her house during the time she isolated herself in which in no surprise Koenji was very quick to admit that he was the one that did that. Of course they want to know why and Koenji proceeds to say it because he just wanted to help out because that is something that he wants to do because helping someone out is just something that he wants to do from time to time. This of course shocks both Michan and Ayana Koji because this is the first time we've ever seen Koenji actually help out someone with no hidden intention whatsoever. When Michan wants to give her gift to him, Koenji is very quick to decline and saying that he doesn't need a thank you gift because it's not that big of a deal. It seems that Koenji has no plans on talking to them further as he's about to leave and just as he's about to leave, Ayana Kori asks him if he really wanted to help people, why doesn't he help the class into getting to class A. Koenji states how that's not really his main role. He doesn't want to help people every single time. He's always prioritized himself and himself only. He knows that whenever people ask him for help, it's not genuine. The only reason why they're asking for his help is because, well, they'll benefit from it. And just like Horikita's class, the only reason why they're asking to cooperate is because it will benefit them from getting into class A, which he does not want to do because for him, that is not genuine help. And this is where Ayana Koji's demeanor starts to change drastically as he tells Koenji that there's going to be a day where he is in risk of expulsion. However, Koenji doesn't really think of it that much because he states that it doesn't matter because Horikita made a promise to him that he is going to be protected. However, Ayana Koji says that what will happen if Horikita Kita doesn't fulfill her promise and what will happen in this very exam that they're about to take, he is the one that gets expelled. But Wendy tells him that it doesn't matter and they can do whatever they want but they should expect the consequences of those actions making it very clear that if he were to be in risk of expulsion he is going to go and get back at Horikita anybody that tries to bring him down and of course you can quickly see the tension because it's very clear that both Koenji and Ayana Koji are giving out their own personal opinion about what they're planning on doing in the near future if things don't go their way. After this Koenji leaves however Ayana Koji notices that Michan was next to him the entire time to listen to everything he had to say to Koenji and Michan was actually planning to talk to Ayana Koji but when Ayana Koji asks what does she want she proceeds to not say anything which of course for Ayana Koji it's very clear that Michan saw a side of him that she never really sees and it's a side of him that no one really sees all that often. The next chapter is kind of pointless because it involves Ike coming up with this strategy that he thought was actually good and while it did sound good on paper, many people from the class, more specifically Horikita, pointed out that there's actually more cons than pros with his strategy. Um, so yeah, that's all you basically need to know about Ike's plan, that it sounded good but the execution wouldn't really make sense. But it's actually after this strategy meeting that Ayana Koji actually invites Horikita to go to a cafe to just simply talk in private. Horikita at first is confused of what he wants to talk about but Ayana Koji wants to get something very clear and of course Horikita has no choice but to accept. This is where Horikita is asked what does she feel about this exam. Horikita thinks it truly and states that this test is clearly going to be a lot of a burden for the person who is in charge of the class more specifically the leader. Obviously the leader has to pretty much know what's going to happen and needs to have some sort of plan as well as a backup plan if things don't go according to the original plan. Ayana Koji is not surprised by this answer but he decides to step it up a level asking Horikita what is her main objective, what is the achievement she's trying to get. To which of course Horikita responds quickly saying she wants to get to class A before graduation. But this is where Ayana Koji takes a question and makes it more deeper than what it was. Ayana Koji tells Horikita that she really care about winning, Horikita responds by yes and Ayana Koji tells her if she is willing to do anything to reach the class A. Horikita is kind of confused by this and wants him to elaborate more. This is where Ayana Koji tells her that there may be times in which she has to sacrifice people in order to reach the class A. This is not surprising and Horikita has taken this to account that she does eventually will have to have a moment in which she probably will have to make the toughest decision and that is sacrificing people from her class in order to make sure that they get to class A. Even though she doesn't like this outcome, is an outcome she eventually has to remember it might happen in the near future. This is where Ayana Koji tells her that if she's willing to use anybody as a sacrifice in order to get to class A and when he means anybody he's precisely talking about anybody. It's not just their class but also the entire school as well. Other people from other classes. 
Birkita is confused by this question, but this is where Ayana Cody mentions Ibuki, telling her that if she needed to sacrifice Ibuki to reach the class A and win, would she do it? Of course, Horikita is taken aback by this question as it takes a while for her to come to an answer, but she states that if it's something she has to do, then she will have no choice. And Ayana Koji is very quick to tell her if that's really what she's really feeling. Does she really think that she has the option to perfectly be able to sacrifice Ibuki in order to win? Ayana Koji can tell from her demeanor that this is something that she was not going to let happen if it came down to it. She clearly has built a connection with Ibuki even if she doesn't want to admit it because it's very clear that Ibuki and Horikita's relationship has gone more deeper than they might think. Sure, they don't outright say that they're friends, but you can tell they care about each other and are looking out for each other. Obviously this question really surprised Horikita and this made Ayana Koji realize that she really needs to think about this more deeply. They just simply getting her class to reach the class A because if Horikita happens to have to use somebody else from another class in order to get to class A that is something that she needs to keep in mind. There might be a time in which she will have to sacrifice other people from other classes to get the things she truly wants. Of course Horikita after hearing all this and hearing what Ayana Koji was really trying to say with her was trying to end this conversation quickly by telling him that she will keep it in mind and it's something that she is not going to forget anytime soon. But of course before things wrap up they have to finish their coffee that they ordered. Of course the coffee is now a little bit cold because of course how lengthy the conversation was. As soon as they're drinking their coffee Horikita makes a remark that the coffee has gotten cold and Ayana Koji proceeds to copy what she just said. Ayana Koji then copies her once again when she tells him to stop copying her. But for a moment, Horikita actually found this really funny because it's very unusual for them to have this back and forth towards each other. But for a split second, Horikita is surprised when she sees a small smile in Ayana Koji's face. So shocked in fact that she really has no idea what to say and she's in a complete loss of words. Ayana Koji at first is confused but when Horikita tells him that she saw him smile, Ayana Koji tries to make it not a huge deal but inside his head he's wondering why did he smile when he was around Horikita. Why didn't he smile with K or why didn't he smile when he was with his friend Harata? That is something that really caught him off guard and it's something that he thinks too deeply and that's the fact that he actually for once showed an emotion that he didn't think he was capable of. Remember, Ayana Koji never smiled. As many characters have pointed out, he never used other expressions or other kinds of emotions to show how he truly feels. He always has the same face regardless of the situation. But if there's one thing that did really prove in this conversation and in this moment is the fact that Ayana Koji does have emotions. He's just really good at keeping it all inside of him. And only time will tell what other emotions we will see from Kiyotaka Ayana Koji. Next chapter focuses on Hashimoto's point of view in which it seems that he's lying on bed but he gets a message from Kito in which it states that Sakinagi has pretty much invited them to have a conversation with her. It seems that Sakinagi is planning on talking about the test which of course Hashimoto starts to get ready. But he also sees another group of messages from the same person, this being a girl that he's actually dating. But it seems that it's not genuine love as Hashimoto is just simply dating this person to get information. So he quickly sends her a message and decides to head to the place where he's supposed to meet Sakinagi. However, upon meeting Sakinagi, Kito, and Komuro, Sakinagi reveals that she actually has no intentions of talking about the exam. This of course shocks Hashimoto and he's wondering why they're even meeting in the first place in which Sakinai just states that it's just simply to show an image to people. Of course some time has gone by and Hashimoto decides to go to the bathroom. It seems that this is a bad habit of him of just simply going to the bathroom sitting in the toilet for a really long time. However, after a while Hashimoto decides to get out of the bathroom and this is where he sees that somebody was waiting for him and this is none other than Ryuin who makes a comment telling Hashimoto that he takes really long. Hashimoto states that while he's not a huge fan of Ryuin and having a conversation with him is sometimes very painful, he has to do what he feels is the right thing to do. Afterwards, we jump right back to Ayana Koji in which he has actually spent his day with K in the mall for pretty much the entire time. However, he gets a message from none other than Kanzaki asking where he's at. As he's waiting in front of his door, Ayana Koji says that he'll be right there and Kanzaki and Watanabe actually is there to wait. After Ayana Koji reaches his floor, he is greeted by none other than of course Kanzaki and Watanabe who see K and K sees them but she doesn't really think too much and simply leaves them alone. 
Kanzaki apologized to Ayana Koji for the sudden visit, but Ayana Koji is not really bothered by it. However, Kanzaki states that there's actually two other people that will be coming. Ayana Koji asks who, and to no one's surprise, it's Ichinose and Mako. Once again, Kanzaki apologizes, but Ayana Koji doesn't see it as a big deal. Once they're all just simply waiting, talking with each other, the doorbell rings and it's of course Ichinose and Mako who actually have brought snacks. At first, Ayana Koya thinks this is going to be a serious discussion about the test but he eventually finds out that they're not really talking about the test and they're just simply hanging out. Which is something that of course Ayana Koya never really does all that often but it's something that is worth experiencing. After some time, Kanzaki suggests that everyone leaves because it's getting late and of course everyone agrees but just when it seems that everyone Everything is over, the doorbell rings once again. This time Ayana Koi wonders who it is, but it's Ichinose, who states that she actually forgot her phone, just simply came back to return it. After Ayana Koji finds her phone, he hands it to her, but this is where Ichinose states that she wants to talk to him a little bit longer. Seeing that she is outside, Ayana Koji offers her to come inside once again, and as he's trying to lock the door, Ichinose tells her that that's not a good idea or else it's going to be really suspicious. After this, Ayana Koji is very quick to tell Ichinose if she actually lost her phone on purpose just so they could talk privately. Ichinose tells Ayana Koji what does he think, to which Ayana Koji says that he is 100% confident that this is what exactly happened. Ichinose doesn't deny it and states that she actually does want to talk to Ayana Koji. But with just the two of them, this is where Ayana Koji is asked by Ichinose if he thinks she is repulsive. Ayana Koji is confused as to why she thinks that he thinks of her like that, to which she responds saying it's because most likely she is seeing a guy that already has a girlfriend. Ayana Koji tells her that she is not repulsive, which brings a smile to Ichinose's face. This is where once again, she tells Ayana Koji that she is deeply in love with him and that this is something she never expected she would have to deal with in her school life and how this is probably her first and last time she would ever feel love towards someone. This is where Ayana Koji realizes that Ichinose has another reason to keep going forward. It's not just because she wants to get into class A or because she wants to protect the people in her class or to protect her friends. No, the other reason is because she is so in love with him and that is something that he really was not expecting but it just creates another route of what could happen in the future. Ichinose starts getting closer to Ayana Koji, reaching almost to his chest, and this is where she tells him that it's okay because she just simply tripped and Ayana Koji was just there to save her, which of course Ayana Koji doesn't deny, but as soon as they are starting to get even more closer, the door suddenly opens and it's none other than Watanabe who wanted to actually talk to Ayana Koji more, but when he saw Ichinose and Ayana Koji together, this is where he completely was shocked and felt silent. He tries to excuse himself, but Ichinose is very quick to hurry to the door and block it telling Watanabe to hear her out. Watanabe is at a loss for words and just simply obeys to what Ichinose tells them and proceeds to go into the living room. This is where Ichinose has a long conversation with Watanabe telling him that it's not Ayana Koji's fault. It was all her decision which of course Watanabe seems to really agree on and doesn't say anything back. Ichinose hopes that Watanabe doesn't say to anything to anybody because she knows that he's not that kind of person. Ayana Koji quickly sees that Ichinose is using his emotions to make sure that he keeps quiet of what happened. This is where Watanabe responds by sharing his story of his love life that he had in middle school. You see, we come to find out that Watanabe actually used to like this girl, but this girl already had a boyfriend. Of course, he was a little sad, but there was nothing he could really do. However, one day, this girl breaks up with the boyfriend and in return, she reveals that she likes him. And Watanabe, of course shocked, then tells her that he loves her as well. He decides to go out, but in secret. However, the girl would then later fall in love with one of his best friends and as a result of this, she would break up their relationship. As things couldn't get more awkward, a couple of months later, his friend would tell him that she actually broke up with the girl and actually joked about it, which of course hurt him because he doesn't know, his friend didn't know that the girl that he was making fun of 
was the same girl that he used to date. Afterwards, Watanabe never really felt a such thing called as love. That is until, of course, he entered the advanced nurturing high school, where obviously, if you've been keeping up to date, you would know that Watanabe is in love with Ichinose's friend, this being Mako, the same girl that literally visited Ayana Koji's house not too long ago. Now, the reason why he even shared this story to begin with was to be even. If he knew something about Ichinose, then it was only fair for Ichinose to know something about him. It's in a way to make sure that none of them stay in charter's secrets because obviously it will make them look bad if they are revealed to be the ones responsible for leaking their secrets. And of course afterwards Ichinose completely understands and tells Watanabe that it's okay and that in fact if he wants to she is perfectly fine making sure that he and Mako are in a relationship very soon. And this of course leads to Ayana Koji realizing just how truly smart Ichinose is as she not only used the emotions of Watanabe but she also used his love for Mako her friend in order to make sure that he stays silent and not only that but in order to create a new ally. Now Watanabe is most likely going to be siding with Ichinose from now because of the promise that they both made. After this we get one more interaction with Hashimura and Sakinagi before the exam in which Hashimura tries to give out new information to Sakinagi revealing that he was actually in fact dating Mazono, the same girl that was in Horikita's class and in fact he was using her to get as much information about Horikita's class as possible. Sakinagi is impressed but it's very clear that she doesn't really seem to really find the information useful. This of course does not sit well with Hashimoto because it makes it very clear that it seems that Sakinagi has no interest in what he has to say. Now the next chapter is of course the day of the test. Now it's a very 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 long test and there's a lot of point of views from many different people so I'm going to try to keep it basic and short because if I were to tell you everything that happened in the exam we'd be here all day so essentially at the end of the day during the exam we come to find out that the people who actually won were in first place Ryuen, second place was Ichinose, third place was Horikita and last place was Sakinagi and this of course shocked a lot of people but once you actually read the novel and you see what actually happened, it makes sense. During the test, it was very clear that Ichinose, Ryuwen, and Horikita were mainly focusing on getting down class A. They did not want class A to get first place, so they wanted to make sure that they were at the very bottom. Sure, they both weren't huge fans of the fact that Ryuwen won, but it was something that was necessary if Sakinari was to be in last place. And because they were in last place, Sakinagi now had to get rid of one of her classmates from her class. Now, Sakinagi being Sakinagi at first showed us that she has no interest in anybody whatsoever. So when it was time to decide who will be eliminated, she decided to do it by lots. You see, the people who were eliminated had to pick a piece of paper, and if it was blank, they were safe. But if they picked the paper with color, they would be the ones to be eliminated. And one by one, the people who were at risk of elimination picked the papers and most of them were safe. And then it was down to two. Two people, this being Kamuro and Yamamuro, who are two people that are close with Sakinagi. These two were the last two to have to pick lots, meaning that there was a 50-50% chance that one of these two was going to survive or be eliminated. Of course, Kawamura doesn't really seem to mind and just wants to get it over with, but Yamamura is clearly frightened and stressing out over the whole situation. Yamamura is also told that she has to do it or else that will be clear indication that she has given up and that's why she will no longer be necessary for the class. Both of them will pick out a paper and then both will open it to see who won and who will be the one expelled. After some time, both of them pick out a paper and it will be revealed that Yamamura survived. This of course shocked the entire class and everyone grew silent because everyone knew that Kamuro was Sakinagi's right hand girl. Everything that she did was for Sakinagi. If Sakinagi told her to spy on people, she would do it. If she was told to collect information, she would do it. Sure, Kamuro's personality wasn't the greatest, but you can see that she was very loyal to what Sakinagi did and say, even if she didn't agree with it all the time. However, Kamuro wasn't mad or sad. She just simply got back to her desk because she knew that it was pointless to do anything because that's what it's already been decided. She would be the one to be expelled. And after the exam ended, people would find out that Sakinari not only lost, they would soon find out who would be the person that ended up leaving class A. Anna Koji 
already being curious decides to see what the other classes are up to now that the exam is over. He starts heading towards Ryuin's class and just when he is close to being inside the classroom he sees that there's somebody looking outside the window and that person is Hiyori. When he sees Hiyori looking at the window he also too looks at the window and sees that she is focusing on Ryuin and his group who most of them are very happy that the exam is over and it seems that they're just simply enjoying their day. But of course, Yori is just simply watching them and not saying anything. This is where Yanakui decides to talk and tell her what is going on. To which Yori explains that while she is happy that they did manage to reach first place, she doesn't really agree on how Ryuin was leading the exam and wonders if Ryuin's tactics are even going to be able to be done in the next future exams. Of course, Ayana Koji doesn't really know the answer to this, but he does state that it's very clear there are some people in class C that are really trying to find the deeper meaning of what it takes to actually be a leader. Something in which Yori is very proud to hear from Ayana Koji and you can see that she really starts to go back to her usual self upon hearing what he had to say. And I think this is really interesting because it goes to show us that Hiyori seems to have now second thoughts of Ryuin's leadership. Beforehand, remember, Hiyori used to be in favor of Ryuin being a leader and she believed full well that Ryuin was the only person in the class to be able to reach them to class A. But now she's probably having second thoughts if what he is doing is truly the way to get to class A. And who knows, this might be a new character development for Iori where we might see in the future her trying to be a leader or be more confrontational towards Ryuin whenever he is planning something. I think that would be a very interesting character development. And I know some people are going to say that that's not going to happen because Ryuin is the kind of person that doesn't take orders from anybody. But you have to keep in mind that Hiyori is the only person that Ryuin never mistreats or never ridicules. Like she is by far the only person in his class that he never forces her to do things that she doesn't want to do. So overall, I'm just really excited to see what Hiyori's character development is going to be and what's going to happen in the next volumes. But anyways, after this, we can get the confrontation between Sakinagi and Hashimoto, where Sakinagi reveals that she knows full well that it was Hashimoto that betrayed the class. You see, it will be revealed in during the exam that Hashimoto was leaking information, which is why it resulted in class A getting into last place. When confronted, at first Hashimoto tries to deny it and actually tries to be all sad and gloomy that Karma was eliminated. However, when Sakinagi he tells him to show her his phone to see the point transactions that he made. This is where Hashimoto reveals his true intention, revealing that yes, in fact, he was the one that sold out Class A. The reason being is because he is tired of Sakinagi always doing what she wants but not doing anything that could benefit the class. Like how Hashimoto insisted that she should get Ayana Koji on her class. Something that has been brought up many times that Sakinai has quickly rejected because she sees it as unnecessary. He tells her how he knows full well how Ayana Koji is and how he's actually somebody with huge potential. And when he said this, Sakinai actually got mad at Hashimoto because how could possibly someone like him know Kiyotaka Ayana Koji? She knows full well who he is and she knows more about him than anybody in the school. And the last person you want to make mad is Sakinagi as she clearly states to Hashimoto that this is just the beginning and that he is going to pay for what he did. Not only did he betray her but he also got in her way of winning. Of course Hashimoto doesn't seem to be interested and brushed it off saying that he can't wait to see what's going to happen because he too also has tricks up his sleeve. And all I gotta say is um to Hashimoto is good luck because Sakinagi is probably not going to be kind with this man anymore and is most likely going to make him regret ever thinking about betraying them. And then we get into the final chapter in which Ayana Koji is heading to the staff room in which he sees Sakinagi there waiting as well. Sakinagi is surprised seeing Ayana Koji here but Ayana Koji says how he wants to say goodbye to Kamuro. Even though he didn't know her personally, it was somebody that he was surprised by was the one to be eliminated considering that she was always right by Sakinagi's side. Of course Sakinagi doesn't deny him being there so she just lets him be there. After a while, Komuro gets out and is surprised to see both Sakinagi and Ayana Koji and she asks him what are they both doing there. Sakinagi tells her that this is probably going to be the last time they'll ever have a full conversation. 
seems that Komuro doesn't mind and decides to let them do as they please. Both Sakinagi and Ayana Koji follow Komuro as she makes her exit. Ayana Koji notices that Sakinagi is trying really hard to be at the same pace of Komuro, but accidentally she trips, falling in the floor. Komuro sees this and helps Sakinagi, telling her to be more careful and that she shouldn't try rushing, trying to match her pace. Something that Sakinagi completely ignores and tries to match Komuro's pace once again. Sakinagi then asks Komuro what is she planning on doing now that she's been expelled from the school. Komuro says how it's most likely that she's going to simply go to another school and finish her high school life just like that. There's still schools out there that accept people who have been expelled from the advanced nurturing high school and she states how her parents simply just wanted to graduate so she's just going to do just that. Ayana Koji and Sakinagi are surprised that Komuro seems to have already planned out what she's going to do once she leaves the school. This is where Sakinai asks further, asking Komuro if there's anything she wants to get off her chest before she leaves. Komuro is confused because it's not like she's going to blame Sakinagi or throw some sort of like disgust towards her because it's not her fault that she was expelled. It all came down between her and Yamamura and as a result of this of her picking the one paper with color, she was the one to lose and that's pretty much all there is to it. Sakinagi asks once again if she's really okay with it. Does she really have nothing else to say? Komura at this point is a little bit annoyed but she tries to keep her composure telling her that there's not really too much to say. She didn't really like the school, it's not like she had a lot of friends and really she just simply was somebody that was just trying to move forward. It's not something that she really was surprised by because she knew that one day there may be a moment in which she might get expelled as well. However, if there's one thing that she does state is how it's funny because before the exam, she was actually thinking what she was going to do on her day off, what she was going to do with Sakinagi and the rest of the group, and what is the other exam going to be about. Something in which obviously it really is very hard to hear because it's very clear that Kamura was still thinking that she was going to be here more longer. But after this, she does say there's one thing that she would like Sakinagi to do and Sakinai asks what it is to which Komuro responds saying to get rid of the person who betrayed the class get rid of the person that was responsible for this outcome to happen Sakinagi tells her if that's really what she wants her to do then she'll do it Komuro then looks at Yanakoji and tells her that from now on he is going to be responsible for making sure that Sakinagi fulfills her promise to which Yanakoji agrees even though he could have easily denied it after this Komuro tells him that it's okay because they're already close to the gate and at that point she can walk on her own. At that moment we can see Komuro just simply go ahead with her head up high and just leave the school. After this Ayana Koji is going to simply leave because there's nothing else to do but Sakinagi tells Ayana Koji that he can leave first because she's actually going to be there for a while. Ayana Koji does what she tells him and decides to leave but wouldn't be long before Ayana Koji makes a stop and waits for a certain person and this certain person is of course Sakinagi. After a while he sees her and she is surprised that he actually waited for her. Ayana Koji asks her how does she feel to which at first Sakinagi tries to brush it off saying that what does he mean by that she feels completely fine and that there's not really a huge thing that's supposed to happen however Ayana Koji is then later being confrontal against Sakinagi telling her if that's really what she's really feeling at the moment even though Sakinagi tries to ignore it once again Ayana Koji decides to just simply come out and say it saying that he knows that Sakinagi is going to miss Kamuro and this is of course is something that irritates Sakinagi because she does not like to hear that. She doesn't like being told that she in fact had a special connection with someone. That is something that she refuses to accept and this is greatly shown with Ayana Koji's words as he is very clear to say that it's her pride that's getting in her way. Not being honest with how she truly feels now that Komuro is no longer by her side. He tells her that if she had been selfish and just simply showed a bit of weakness, she could have found a way to keep Komuro safe and just expel somebody else that wasn't seen as important. If she really didn't care about Komuro, she wouldn't have been feeling like what she is now, wouldn't be trying so hard to suppress her feelings. And this is where Sakinai clearly shows how irritated she is hearing this from Ayana Koji as he tells Ayana Koji that this is just simply him trying to manipulate her and try to get in her head to make sure that she doesn't get in his way. 
way but ayana cody in these moments states that that is not the case he is being 100 percent truthful with what he is saying he's not manipulating her he's not beating around the bush he is being genuine with what he is saying to her sakinai knows this very well because she can no longer look at ayana cody's face any longer and just simply look at the sky and it's here that she reveals that all throughout her life she never gotten close to anybody she saw that anybody who was not smart like her beneath her so how could she possibly all of a sudden now feel genuine sadness that somebody that was with her by her side for a really long time is no longer there anymore even though kamuro and sakinai's relationship was very complex to say the least you can see that Saki and Nagi and Kamuro really did look out for one another sure you could argue that they were together for their benefits but at the end of the day they still stuck around each other without necessarily hating on each other and I think that's really interesting to see we finally get to see Saki and Nagi show a weakness and that is that she is in fact somebody that does value other people she does care about other people she does have people that she did get close to and in reality she is somebody that has emotions for what happens to other people ayana koji is just simply watching her but this is where sake nagi is amazed that ayana koji told all this and she could see now why so many people are changing ever since he came into the school why she's noticed so many different kinds of people whenever they interact with him think differently and change their attitude and personality but ayana koji doesn't really see it as a huge deal because he says that this is not the end there's still more to come and after this sakinari goes on her own way and leaves ayana koji alone this is where ayana koji reveals that it seems that he needs to start getting prepared for what's about to happen things are coming into place and now he needs to not only know what to do with k but also with Ichinose, but most importantly, what to do with his class. He doesn't have much time, and with the remaining time that he has, he has to make sure that he isn't forgotten, that he becomes somebody that is very hard to not just forget, but becomes somebody memorable in the school, because that is something that he was taught by none other than Manabu Horikita. Showing once again how much respect he has for Horikita Manabu, but also the fact that even though Manabu is no longer here, his influence shows a lot in Ayana Koji and the actions that he has done right now. And that's the end of Classroom the Elite Second Year Volume 10. So many things happen in this volume, so many events, so many highlights, so many just interesting things that I can't wait to read the next volume. There is some short stories, there was one for I, there was one for Hiyori, and there was one for Horikita. The one that was interesting was Hiyori's because come to find out in her short story that even though she's usually private and doesn't tend to always say a lot of things to people Ayana Koji is the only person that she expresses a lot about how she feels and how she views towards other people this is something that is very worth noting because towards the end when she is feeling better after what Ayana Koji told her you can't believe that she actually has these kinds of emotions towards Ayana Koji and it's something that she sees as a very bad thing because she knows full well that Ayana Koji is with somebody so right now he is somebody's boyfriend and that is something that she can't change for now so now it's been confirmed that Hiyori is in fact somebody else that is interested in Ayana Koji and yeah that's pretty much all I have to say also some Something that is worth noting as well that towards the end of the volume we actually do get an author's comment that is actually very unfortunate so we come to find out in the author's comment that the author this being Kinugasa is dealing with a lot of health problems he states how there's been a lot of health problems that have been affecting his life and the only thing I could say is I wish him the luck because it sucks to have you know health problems nobody should have to deal with pain and a lot of things happening to their body so i wish him nothing but the best and hopefully he gets better if he does need to take a break then i highly recommend he does that because his health is more important than the series as much as i love classroom dle and i want more volumes right now if his health is in poor status i want him to recover first before continuing with the story that's pretty much all i have to say i wish nothing but the best to kinugasa and hopefully he recovers because that just simply sucks and i hope he gets better real soon and yeah that's pretty much my entire video pretty long video probably the longest one i've ever made but yeah hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time